What up YouTube? It's The Ways and I'm Tia and today we're back with another video. I'm especially excited for today's video because it is time for a Pat McGrath takeover. Yes! I have been planning and scheming and plotting this video for a hot minute and I finally got as many Pat McGrath products as I could to try out for you guys and give my first impressions on. So if you want to see this Pat McGrath takeover, then definitely please keep watching. But first, during the intro, go ahead and subscribe if you're not part of the fam gang gang. If you're returning, thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoy this takeover. Go ahead and hit that notification bell so you can be updated every time I load a new video. And let's go. Okay, so I don't want to take forever with this intro. I'm really excited to start playing with these products from Pat McGrath. If you don't know who Pat McGrath is, she is a African American makeup artist. She has a huge line of products, um, very talented from what I can tell. When I first started in makeup, I did not know who Pat McGrath was. And even as I grew with makeup and, and worked where I worked, I still didn't know. And then uh, like later on when I started my channel, or maybe even a little bit before I started my channel, I, I heard about a palette that costs $128. And I said, 128, who? Like, what? Who is out of their mind to charge $128 for a palette? Like, that is insane. And then I seen people buying them. <laughs> And, and loving them and using them. And I couldn't really bring myself to want to spend that much on a palette at the time. Um, but I did start off with like a little mini palette from Pat McGrath. It was all shimmers. I got it from Sephora for like maybe $15. Very beautiful shades. More of a companion palette though. And so that was my introduction to the brand. And then slowly but surely I started getting complexion products and all that kind of stuff and now i have a full face of pat mcgrath and we're gonna try this stuff out so obviously we're gonna focus on the eyes first because i am an eyes eyes first type of chick um but pat mcgrath doesn't have any brow products so i did do my brows and let me tell you how i've prepped so far i went ahead in with my precisely my brow pencil by benefit this is in number five to do my brows i cleaned up my brows with my nars um soft matte complete concealer and this is in caramel i just went ahead and used that because i do have her concealer but i'm gonna use it for underneath my eyes i prep my eyes with my mac paint pot in contemplative state and that is where we are at let me bring you a little closer well actually let me show you what we're going to use first so the first thing that we're going to use is yes one of her mothership palettes and this is subliminal there are 10 motherships if you're new to pat mcgrath and this is the first one that she ever came out with motherships are her 128 dollar palettes okay so it comes in this cardboard packaging it has information on the back in regards to the palette pat mcgrath labs mothership and this is subliminal which is number one um you'll see why i was drawn to this palette once we open it if you've never seen it i love how like every time you open this packaging it feels like you're opening a letter or a new package so you're getting like a gift or something and it opens like this and then it has the little card that has all the names on it and i'm not going to worry about this too much when I'm doing this eye look uh, at all. I'm not gonna use that. Um, and then this is what the palette looks like inside. It's all black. And then the back is gold. Isn't that dope? Like so sleek. It still has the plastic on it. I have not took off this plastic piece. It is very weighty and heavy. So I feel like that's kind of where you're getting your money's worth in regards to how hefty and sturdy the packaging is and how luxe the packaging is. Um, it does open up, it does have a full size mirror in here 
and this is the color story yes i picked this palette because it's a very cool toned color story and it just spoke to me the most there is one other palette that i did pick up but i originally picked this one up first um so that's the one i'm gonna use but i did get number five as well which is more of a bronzy summery type of vibes it's more of a warm tone palette this one is cool tone i feel like it's one i think there's only like a couple cool tone palettes one thing about pat mcgrath is she does a lot of pinks and browns and so this one was so different it spoke to me the most so i had to get it so we're gonna jump into this palette i'm gonna bring you a little closer we're gonna see if the formula matches up to the price we know the packaging does but does the formula so i'm gonna bring you a little closer and i'm gonna run the swatches and then we're gonna get into this look here are swatches of the pat mcgrath mothership subliminal eyeshadow palette can we say gorgeous oh my goodness i can't they swatch so nicely i know it's more about the performance but swatches are good too and when i tell you they swatch so good so let me first say that i did not spend 128 dollars on this palette i got it on some type of deal Pat McGrath does awesome sales, 25, 30% off, spend this much, you get this much off. And the more you buy, the better the deal is, honestly. So I think I picked this up for about $80 or something to that effect. But let me tell you, it was a bargain. Because <laughs> we know your girl is a little cheap. Cheapy, cheap, cheap. And I like a good deal. Let's get into this look. So I think... I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna use this Ruffer 27, and I'm gonna go into this shade here, which looks like a pinky, light brown color. Kinda looks like it has a little bit of a pink undertone. We're just gonna drop this all over the lid. I did use my MAC Paint Pop because I love that primer and I know how it performs. So this would be just something, a good blending out shade for me. Um, I'm going to put it all over the lid or if I just wanted to set a concealer down, if I put a concealer as a base just to even out the tone on my eyes, this would be a good color for that. We're just going to do both eyes. You know, normally I just do one eye at a time, but we're doing a Pat McGrath takeover. So not a way back Wednesday. So let's get into both eyes. Okay. And these are so like this was just an easy color to put down not much to it this is kind of a smoky palette so it is gonna be kind of um i think the look that i want to do a little smoky but i can see all different kind of looks coming from this palette also i did say i was going to swipe these shades for you going forward so let me swatch this so you can see the effect of this shade yeah it's like a taupey brown right up my alley i love that shade i love shades like this i should say so you can really see it there okay the next color i'm going to go into i think i want to go into this gray leaning shade and let me swipe it i did swatch the palette a little bit so just so you know oh yes that is a nice gray. That's one little swipe. These shadows feel really soft to the touch, but they blend out very good. Like, like they're not too like buttery feeling when you fill them, but you get a lot of pigment and they're not like hard pressed too much. They're just like kind of perfect. I don't even know if I can explain it. If there's not a lot of kick up in the pan at all, like at all. It's just like very smooth. I can just go one little swipe. I'm getting all that pigment. Also, you can see the pigments coming out on my swatch. It's not sitting on my finger. So that's really cool. All right, I'm gonna go into that shade and I'm gonna use the Singe Beauty EO2. And we're just gonna pick up some of that. It does have a little pickup when I, in this shade, when I actually um, pick it up with this brush. I'm gonna 
dust a little off because it is a darker shade and make sure I can build this upright. And we're just going to take this into the crease to build up some depth here. I did also pick up another Pat McGrath palette just like this weekend or last week, I think. I went to Marshalls. No, I went to TJ Maxx. I was at TJ Maxx. No, I'm lying. I was at Marshalls. I went to TJ Maxx the next day. I was at Marshalls at night and I'm looking through the Marshalls good makeup. They have it now in a case um, because I guess people are thieves. And oh, this is nice. Just building up really nice and blending out into that other shade, as you can see, very easy. And what did I find? The Pat McGrath Holiday Palette from this uh, 2023, the big one. And in that palette, if you haven't seen it, maybe I'll pop up a little picture. Uh, let me scoot over. And it has a lot of colors to it because if you look at a lot of like this color, this palette popped out that blue. That blue was a standout shade. You'll see in this palette, you know, all the other colors are pretty neutral except for um, the shimmers, which I'll show you. But she does a lot of, like I said, pinks and browns and neutrals. And so to have a palette that has greens and purples and um, blue mattes, like people were lost their minds. So I didn't pick it up when it launched because I really wanted a mothership palette. And so I was like, mm, I'll just wait. And then it went on a heck of good sale at Sephora. For like 50% off and that palette was like $80 so it wasn't too much and it didn't go 50% it went to 50 I got the palette for $28 $28 yes it was the only one there like it was totally meant to be mine okay I like how that's blending out that is very good um, but let me show you the palette so what she does is she does special shades over here. And so this blue is popping out of this palette. You can tell this one up top, you can see through the mirror is a duochrome because that looks silvery blue. And then you can see that it turns pink up there. These two are special shades as well, like meaning the sparkle and the shine is just so different. Um, well, I'm going to see because I have a lot of indie shades, but we're going to see how different they are. Okay, so that's there. I'm going to take the first brush and just swipe over that to make sure we're kind of blended. And we can go back and blend too after we have the color down. I like this brush because of the tip of the Sins Beauty brush. can be very precise. All right, and I'm going to take the same Singe Beauty brush. I do have my color switch here. Not that I really need to take off the color because I'm going to go into this black. Let's, and it's kind of a charcoal looking black. So I just barely put my hand in there. I did, shoop, look how much pigment. Let's see what it do. Okay, nice. Let's do a little more, build that up. So it's black, but it's not like, it's like more of a charcoal-y black like it has a little bit more gray to it than like a true true black i feel that's what i'm getting the vibe of and actually i really like that so we're gonna take the eo2 from singe again dip into that black and we're just gonna put this on the outer edge here just stamp it right there just stamping it i'm not even like swiping it i'm literally just stamping look at that black that is that is what you call an awesome black. Now I'm going to just wiggle just to buff this out here a little bit. Wow. Look at the pigment. I said I just pat, blend this out, outer corner V a little bit. And there's that. Let's do the other side because I really just want it concentrated here on the edge. Yeah. I don't want to love these shadows. <laughs> she drops a mothership every year. I think eventually I'll probably get one of the pink ones. Maybe the cool tone pink that they dropped. 
Um, but I'm really interested now that I'm trying these out to see what her next color story is. These blend so good. So good. Look at this. The pigment is there. It's not a lot of work and effort to get what you want. I'm just blending this here out. Kind of smoking it out on the edge. And it's kind of going like onto my skin here. It's kind of outside of the realm of my eye. Okay, then I'm going to take the original blush and brush and just blend it into the crease a little bit, but not too much. Take the same Singe Beauty brush, not adding any product and just reinforcing that edge. All right, let's uh, drop a shimmer on this a lid. So I was really wanting to play with the dark blue, but let's see. Ooh, but oh my God, look at, dang, that's like a topper looking shade with, you see the blue, it shifts too, cause it's like a white base. Let's swatch this one. Oh yeah, oh my God, look, look at that iridescent, the shift. You could put that over that black base and that would probably look so good. Yeah, we're going in with this shade. <laughs> we're definitely going in with this shade. I really just wanna use my finger and see what it do. Oh, <gasps> look it. Because I don't need it to be too precise. We're just dropping this. Okay, I'm getting some fallout. That could be me too. I'm gonna kind of press. I wanted to see how these look without any, like without it being wet. That's pretty. Okay, I want this to still be black. So I'm just patting that back on over that. Just gonna take this small, like little Morphe brush to M456, uh, go back into that shade. Let me get my mirror. This is a beautiful shade. Ooh, it's so sparkly. I can see even up close. I'm just kind of like maneuvering it with this brush a little bit more the way I want it. Um, but I can see like green and the turquoise blue, purple. This is fire. I wonder what it looks like wet. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna take the a little bit more of the black and the gray mixed together on the singe and just pat. So I really still want this to be like kind of black or matte. And then just take this brush, blend over. That's so pretty. Okay, cool. Let me even this out. Let me start with the brush and see what it do. Wow, I really like this color. Okay, I'm gonna use my finger so we get the same effect. I just kind of want to see how it's gonna go on so you can kind of see there. But with my finger, I can like press and it just gives it more of that iridescent. It gives it a little bit more impact with the finger. Pat McGrath also does sell like this, I don't know what it's called. This like stuff that you put down first and then you can put your shadow on top. It's supposed to make it like sparkle more or like adhere. That, that looks so good. And then when you shift, you can see, like when you move, you can see the shift because that looks empty, but it's not empty. There's color there. Like, that looks so good. I'm gonna take a little bit of the gray back on this brush and just kind of put it in the middle here in between the two colors just to blend like up in here so it looks blended. That looks really good. Okay, let me clean up underneath my eyes. We'll get into the complexion and then we'll come back and do the bottom lash line as well. But I am so excited, this is fire. Okay, so I didn't pull you all the way back. I did a little cleanup. I don't mind a little fallout as I don't have my face on. So I'm not mad at it. Plus it wasn't like fallout that smeared 
all over the place like it came off it was perfectly fine okay so now let's get into some complexion we're gonna go into the pat mcgrath lab skin fetish sublime perfection foundation yes i'm so excited i this was probably right after i bought that palette this was the next thing i bought this foundation dropped okay and it had 33 colors i have not used this and it was $70, $69. I round up $70, okay? I do think that I paid full price for this. I'm excited to see how this performs and the color match and all that good stuff. Um, it does say on Sephora that is a natural finish, hydrating, medium coverage. So let's see what it do. But look at how this opens, so good. I am in medium deep a 23. Look at this packaging, wow. So luxe, look at that. It has um, a frosted glass case. I love the little black top, the gold accents, yes. But let's see how the foundation actually performs because that is the true story. I'm gonna go ahead and shake her up because it's been a minute. I'm telling you it's been a minute. I'm also gonna use my Fenty foundation brush to blend this out. I usually go on the back of my hand, but I have color, so let's see. I think I'm gonna, Go right here, the palm of my hand. Oh, she watery. She watery. Okay, I did like a pump, really, a pump and a half maybe. Let's see what this do. I'm just gonna pick it up on my foundation brush like so. Ooh. Let's move the hair back, okay. It is very lightweight. I wasn't expecting that, but then, you know, sometimes your um, higher end foundations are more like skin like foundations than like a beat, <laughs> like a full coverage type of beat. Okay, I did another pump, like that was a full pump. I love the color, that looks really good. Okay, T on the color match. I think it looks really good. Okay, normally I would pat, but this kind of brush is just a little different. We do have some dark spots here, so we'll go in and see if we can get more of a medium coverage or how much I can kind of build that up. But... Kind of just want to do one side so you can see when I say it's a lightweight, like it's lightweight. I feel like I have nothing really on my skin, period. It does look like a natural finish, which I love, not matte, not too glowy. It's like my skin, but better. I'm going to go on the other side of the brush and kind of just blend this into my hairline. Can you believe I've had this? foundation for so long i think i got it when it launched like or maybe it was already out but it was just getting a lot of hype and i bought it and still haven't used it so this is before uneven <laughs> this is after totally even skin it looks really really good it feels really really good i'm gonna do another pump I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna do this other side and see if I can get the whole side done with one pump, which I probably can, because the first one is, you know, when you're first getting it out, I don't know what it's gonna do, and it's not really a full pump. I have some stuff going on right here, so I don't expect it to cover that. I feel like this would be an everyday type of foundation, like, no matter, like, going to work, like, just, natural like i want to even out my skin tone um even if i didn't want to do a whole bunch of other stuff i think you could put this foundation on and really look like you have no makeup on and that's pretty cool okay let me see if i can get a little bit more and i'm going to see if i can cover this little spot
not really so it is a medium coverage and that's okay for the dark spots to be disrespectful and shine through <laughs> it's okay it is okay because we're treating them anyways okay cool so i am liking the foundation first impression obviously i gotta use it some more but i think my skin looks really really good okay so let's go ahead and go into concealer so i did pick up the skin fetish sublime perfection concealer and this baby i got it around the same time as the foundation and it is for 34 dollars, and it also comes in 33 shades and i got it in m21 let's pull this out all right nice glass packaging kind of small size i kind of like that let me wipe this makeup off. This foundation looks really good. I like it. Okay, sorry. I just had to look at it again once it's kind of setting a little bit. So let's go into this concealer. It does have a little dull foot. Uh, okay. So that's the tone. Uh, I wish I would have went a little lighter, but that's okay. That's me. This could probably be a natural everyday concealer for me. Let's see some of these claims real quick. So I didn't really look at that. I just said, Pat McGrath, at the cart, concealer. Uh, natural finish, awesome. Full coverage, it says. So let's see what it do. I like a full coverage concealer, and I like it not to be matte, so. Natural finish is a good thing. I'm gonna go here. We're gonna stay away from my chin, chinny chin chin. It feels good. It doesn't feel too heavy or anything like that. What do I wanna blend this out with? I'm gonna use this Real Techniques brush. I've been liking a bigger brush for my concealer blend out because um, for one, it covers a lot more space. It doesn't take as much time but I feel like it blends out even more seamlessly too. Take that right underneath the eye. Yes, okay. It's not drying down too fast, so that's really good. You have a little time to work with it. You could probably even leave it on a minute and let it dry down a little just so that way you get a little bit more full coverage. I'm not that patient. I just like to like get going on it, you know? The color is not bad. I just, I like a brightening concealer, but this would be, like I said, if maybe if I didn't want to wear any makeup, I could wear this. I could get away with this concealer uh, by itself, kind of like my hourglass concealer. Actually, my hourglass one might be too dark, but that same kind of vibe, even my Dior. That's kind of one where I can wear like every day without any makeup on if I'm feeling a little dark. I didn't have on any eye cream or anything like that today. I just put on my foundation, uh, my moisturizer. So I think it blended out very nicely, very smoothly. It looks smooth, looks really pretty. I like it, let me know what you think. Looks good, feels good. Um, I've been also trying out the Natasha Denona, so I don't want to mention that because this is a Pat McGrath takeover, but, uh, that would be something that I would compare it to, but I think it looks really good. Everything's meshing well together. Definitely feeling good about this situation or whatever. Okay, so the next thing that I got is some powder. I didn't get a full setting powder. I just got the Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Blurring Under Eye Powder. So it's so cute, the little packaging. It kind of reminds me of my Charlotte Tilbury, but it's a little bigger. It's like domed. So I feel like I even get more product I'm thinking. I got it in yellow. There are four colors and it's for $34. Personally, I don't think this looks yellow, but let's see what it do. That might be a good thing. I'm just gonna take this um, Sigma highlighting cheek brush. I kind of like highlighter brushes for powder brushes. 
and I'm just going to set underneath my eyes. Okay, one thing I can say is it does look a little brighter and it doesn't take away like the tone of this powder. I mean, of it doesn't take away the tone of the concealer and that's what I really like. It does have a little mirror in here. Okay. Um, we'll just set a little bit on our nose here. We'll set in our forehead. I know it's for under eyes only, but I can do what I want. Like Tabitha Brown said, that's my business, okay? Uh, she does have a powder. I've been thinking about maybe picking that up, but it wasn't so necessarily important to me to get a face of powder. But let me kind of, so it's a very, very thin like powder. Let me just swatch it so you can see it on my, that's the yellow. So it does show up, but for just underneath my eyes, I'm cool with it being like that. And I did a good swatch. So it doesn't look too white. It doesn't look too bright. I think that it looks really good. So. Face is looking popping. Okay, let me pull you closer. And let's do underneath these eyes together really quick. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go back into the palette. We're gonna take that gray and that black and I'm gonna blend them again on this E02 from Singe and kind of just pull it down a little bit on the outer portion of the eye. Like, just like that much, like not too much. Just a little bit. I think those are some good, that's a good black. And kind of connect it to this outer V here, okay? We'll kind of buff it out towards the bottom because you know I like a smoked out bottom lash. But if you don't, then you can keep it where it was at. So then I'm gonna take another brush. I'm gonna take this Morphe M124 and we're gonna go into this blue here. This is like a navy. Look, look at that. Look at that. Oh my goodness. I can't wait to put that on my eyelid. So smooth. Like all the shadows are so smooth. Like the shimmers feel like the mattes. I can't even explain it. I don't even know how to explain it. So I'm gonna take this little brush and I'm just going to drop this, no, no water or anything underneath my bottom lash line. Connect it to the black and pull it all the way through. That's so pretty. It's so smooth. Like you could use this blue shimmer as probably a matte or like a liner on the top lash line. So good. Okay, I'm gonna take the same brush. I'm gonna go into another shimmer. You know I wanna use as many colors as possible. I think we're gonna go into this pink dual chrome here. This top one, you see it through the mirror. This one. Do you see this shift? Yes. Let's drop this on the side here. Oh yeah. Let's see if we can see the shift. Oh yeah. You can see a little bit of the pinky purple vibe. Kind of has a, um, I wonder if you see the pink. Like I can look at it up close and personal and I totally see the pink and the purple. But you're probably seeing a lot of silver. All right, I can't wait to use that by itself either. Okay, let's go into that. I'm gonna use the same brush. I'm gonna just pop that into my inner corner. Okay, looks so good. I love this blue look. Okay, let's get into some bronzer. So Pat McGrath just dropped a bronzer this year and I got it when it first came out. It's called Divine Bronzer and I got it in Bronze Divinity, okay? When I first ordered it, they totally sent me the wrong color. Like when I say the wrong color, I mean the lightest color. Like it looks like that yellow powder. I don't know who that's gonna bronze, but I guess it's for somebody. I did give it to my daughter's friend and, and she's enjoying it. But 
It comes in five colors, $39. I got the one that's kind of like a terracotta. So this is the packaging. Look at this. So has Venus right here. And oh, it's just like the palette. So good. It does get fingerprints on it really bad, but that's so nice. That's so luxe. So let me show you what it looks like. Oh, okay, let's put this on. I'm gonna use this Real Techniques brush. It's more of a foundation brush, but I want something kind of big. And it's still really soft. So there's, I'm just patting into the bronzer a little bit. And let's see. Now this is kind of a dense brush. Ooh, yes. Do you see that warmth? It said terracotta and I was like, yeah, I want terracotta. I don't really have bronzers like that. Ooh, that looks like this is a bronze. Like this is a bronzer. I'm not gonna mistake it for a contour powder. Like this is bronzing up my skin. Like it's giving that sun kiss like i got a tan vibe that is so pretty the formula is very smooth easy to work with it's not like too much at one time i can build it up wow i really like that oh i'm so glad i used this so i can like use it all summer long it is a matte bronzer i think they did have some shimmery like ones if i'm not mistaken um but i still think it has a natural looking finish i don't think it's too too uh, matte especially for my liking like i don't look at that that looks so good okay okay bronzer okay bronze venus what are you called yes 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 okay awesome i really like that look at how oh yeah i'm bronze to the gold okay all right so let's get into some blush now i did get two blushes um this is the first one i picked up this is divine blush what's it called paradise venus it's in like this packaging which is really pretty too just the purple it is $39 and it comes in seven different shades I got paradise Venus yeah paradise Venus blush same packaging I like this black sleek black packaging and this is the shade ooh that's so pretty we could use this I think it has more brownie pink I think it's a little bit more neutral leaning warm i think so i think i don't want to use this right now but i will bring it on the channel i also did recently pick up pat mcgrath was having a huge sell on her website and i got this pat mcgrath's divine blush glow trio this is what it looks like lifts up the packaging it's the details for me yes i don't know if i like all this stuff on here and i think there's penises on this packaging okay so <laughs> this is what it looks like and i got galactic sun so i had two different options so this one has two blushes and a highlighter. And that's why I want to get it because I knew I needed a highlighter, obviously, to try for my takeover. Um, but the other one had the other blush in it that I already have. And I'm like, well, why do I need two? And so what I want to test out with this one is if these colors are going to show up on my skin tone because this was a light one. This color in the middle is gorgeous i i can't wait to try that but i think we're gonna do the pink i think it will go more with our look and it is more cool tone than the other one so divine rose desert orchid and golden nectar is the highlighter we're gonna go in with divine rose which is the pink and i'm gonna use this morphe brush this is my favorite blush brush one of them e48 morphe yes e48 we're just gonna pat 
Okay, yes, it definitely shows up. That bronzer is just bronzing, but I can definitely see the pink. Hope you can. I'm gonna take it up around. It is more cool toned. Kind of blend it into the bronzer there, but you can see from here, you see it to here without it. Oh yeah, and you could build this up. It's showing up on my skin tone. I'm like, okay, okay, Pat. Cause sometimes I be feeling like, is she, does, she, does she care about the dark skin girl? I know she black, but like some of the stuff be so light and I'm just like, okay, well, can I use that? So this is a testament to say, yes, I can. And I would love to see it on darker skin tones. Not to, we're gonna break it through here a little bit. That's beautiful, very pretty. I did pick up her mascara. Uh, this is the Star Wars edition because it was on sale. I think that palette too, the trio, I probably got it for like $30. So that was pretty good for all three. The mascara, I think I got for 12. I think it's normally like $30. This is the, this is an extreme black and this is the dark star mascara. This is the volumizing mascara. Um, I don't care about Star Wars, but I really want to try this mascara, but I didn't know if I want to spend that much. The reviews were kind of, uh, I don't know. Um, but I love a volumizing mascara. I love mascara. If you are new to my channel or, um, don't know, I don't wear a lot of false lashes. I think I've done maybe two looks with falsies. I really like mascara. I like my lashes and you know, I don't mind putting on a little bit of a falsy, but I really do enjoy mascara. So we will put this one to the test. I'm going to go ahead and put it on one eye and then I'll be back to show you because that takes a long time. And I don't want you guys sitting here through the edits watching me put on this mascara, but I will put it on, tell you how many coats I did and then show you what one eye looks like. Okay. I'll spread my face down too. This is not Pat McGrath, but I'm gonna go ahead and set, set my face with the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray as well. And then we'll come back, show you the mascara, and then we'll come back, do the highlighter, and wrap up this look with the lips. Yes. So I brought you a little closer so you can see the mascara on. Um, I do like it. I mean, it gave me volume, as you can tell. The brush reminds me of too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara Brush. So I love a brush like this. I feel like sometimes with the mascara, it takes a little time to marry. You know, the first application is usually the worst, and then the more you use it, the better it gets. This, I probably did about three or four coats um, to get this effect. I like that you can continue to layer it on and it doesn't really clump up. Um, I'm curious to see how it dries down. I'm curious to see as I play with it some more what it do. But for first impressions, I'm not mad at it. Especially I spent $15, I'm not mad at it. I love the volume that it's giving me. I love the brush. So I just have to test out the formula a little bit more. But let me go ahead and do the other eyes and then we will wrap up this look. Okay, so this is what we're looking like with both eyes on. Um, the second time it did not take as long as probably about three coats to get this vibe. I like a, I don't want to say, I'm going to just clean up my eye a little bit. I don't want to say like a clumpy mascara, but I do like I do. And, um, it, it doesn't give, it, it's starting to give a little clump now that I've used it. A little bit more and wiggled my brush around in there I'm getting more of the formula definitely like I said I just need to play with it a little bit more and really get my thoughts on how I like this mascara do I like the vibe that I'm getting with my eyes right now absolutely absolutely I think it's doing it for me in regards to mascara some I've tried I'm just like no right off top so I can't say that so much about this one I did go in with a little eyeliner this is by Colourpop the cream gel eyeliner this is just like a silvery shade uh kicker 
see if I have any place to put it so you can see it. But it's just silver and I thought it would go really well with the look. It has a little shimmer to it too. So I did pop that into my waterline to just brighten things up a little bit. Okay, let's go back into this palette and let's do a little bit of highlighter. And this is the Golden Nectar. And I'm gonna use the same brush that I used earlier for my uh, powder, the Sigma brush. I'm just gonna go on the other side of the brush and get a little, ooh, let's see. Ooh, it says golden, but it does have a little bit of a pinky vibe to it. Ooh, I'm not mad, that looks pretty. It's more of a sheen than like a shimmer. Very pretty, okay. I could have went a little lighter hand, but that's okay. Might as well go big or go home. I think it really goes with the blush though. And our look today, I think that's really pretty. Let me, yeah, it's very smooth, just like all the other powders that I use. I'll drop it right here to see if you can see the effect of the color. It's like a champagne-y pink. That's kind of the vibe I'm getting. So it does look really good on my skin tone as well, which I was a little nervous about, but I also like a brighter highlighter. Let me just take my blush a brush and blend and mesh everything together. All right, last thing we're gonna do is go into lips. So I want to keep it very simple. Um, I didn't know how I felt about the lipstick options um, and I wanted to get something obviously on sale. So I did find this a lip gloss. It is from the Star Wars as well. And this is in Bronze Venus. So <laughs> Bronze Venus, like divine, divinity, like that's all we've been seeing. Ooh, this is really pretty. Look at this a pink with some gold shimmers and some green reflex in it. So cute. Let's see how this is gonna look and feel, cause there's a lot of shimmer in here. Mm. Mm. Okay, well it smells. It smells like the lip products from Huda Beauty. It smells like chocolate chip cookie dough. That's what I get, chocolate chip cookie dough. The shimmer, the shine, so pretty. There's a lot of shimmer in here, but it's definitely not gritty. Like you can't feel the shimmers on your lips. It feels hydrating, it feels smooth. I think it goes really good with this look. I would definitely be um, up to trying more lip colors based off this first impression right here. Look at my lips look plump, shimmery, glossy. Ooh, okay, come through lip gloss. Very good. So this is the final look. Yes, I hope you like it because I absolutely love how this look came out. I think this is my favorite look in regards to wearing blue shadows with the purple and all the different reflexes and shimmers and shine. So the palette was A1, like the palette was fire. I can't wait to use it again and bring more looks to you on my channel and off of my channel. I just really can't wait to play in that palette more, especially because I spend my coins on it, okay? Um, the complexion products, the concealer, the foundation looks so pretty. I really, really like this foundation. I like how lightweight it is. I love the color. Um, it looks like skin. I think my complexion looks really pretty. We also went in with the concealer, which is more of a natural concealer for me, which I like, and the powder. Um, comparing this to my Charlotte Tilbury, so we're gonna have to play with that a little bit more. But first impressions, I'm, I'm happy that I have these complexion products in my collection, and I can't wait to use them some more. I think a star of the show, though, 
was definitely this bronzer. This bronzer was fire to me. I love the color. I love the texture and how easy it is to put on and build up. This was this was nice. She she did her thing on this bronzer for sure. And I don't have too many bronzers with this tone, so I absolutely love that. Uh, the powder products are just a one, like the the bron uh, the blusher and the highlighter. Beautiful, beautiful. You can build it up, make it more intense, make it soft, look like an everyday look. And I think that this is a good value with all three of the shades in here. Um, to kind of switch up and try different ones. I can't wait to try this middle color. So best believe that's coming. Uh, the mascara, still got to play with this. I mean, I like the effect it gives. I will have to let you know how I'm feeling on this. The more that I use it, would I repurchase it? Right now, I'm liking the way my eyes look. Like, I like the volume. It's kind of giving me, like I said, the Better Than Sex mascara, kind of the Mac stack, just um, a little different. So, and I love that Mac Stack mascara. And then the lips, I think that's it, right? And then the lips, yes. The lip gloss is fire too. I really like the lip gloss. I like how it feels. I like how it looks. So, yes, I hope you enjoyed this takeover with me. Do you have any of these products? Are there anything that you've been eyeing or wanting to try from Pat McGrath? Let me know down below in the comments. I'm really interested to see what you guys think of this look and of her products yourself. This is a takeover for the book, so I'm so excited. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. Remember, there's only one way to do your makeup and it's your way. We'll see you in the next one. Have a blessed day. Peace.